Welcome back to Asian Voices. I recently had the pleasure of sitting down to chat with actor Clyde Kuzatsu in Los Angeles, who you may recognize as he has appeared in hundreds of TV shows and films over the last 40 years, including Kung Fu, MASH, Magnum PI, Star Trek The Next Generation, and most recently appeared in the sitcom Dr. Ken. Mr. Kuzatsu is also the former president of the Los Angeles chapter of SAC-AFTRA and currently the vice president of National SAC-AFTRA, which represents pretty much every working actor and star in Hollywood. So, let's meet him. Aloha, Clyde. Aloha. Thank you so much for being on the show and taking your time out of your busy schedule. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And I said aloha because you are Hawaiian born. Yes. And you moved to uh, Los Angeles, what, when you were in college? Uh, after I graduated from college oh, in 70, okay. I, uh, I've been in Los Angeles since 1971. 71. Yeah, I, I, uh, I graduated in high school in 66 uh, and I went to oh. Northwestern University Theater School, the theater department in, uh, from 66 to 1970. And at that time, uh, I was the only Asian American within the theater department, or any oh, wow. uh, actually in any uh, other person of color, and um, I once had a, a professor stop me in my freshman year and say, "You want to be an actor? Why? <laughs> There's only Tiasa, the August Moon, and King and I. How could you possibly make a living?" And it, it was deflating. Kinda, yeah. oh, it very, oh no, no, it was very <laughs> deflating. Basically, what it was was that, you know. If I want to make it, and if it has to be, I have to be 10 times better to compete with a Howley, this we call whites in mm -hmm. Hawaii, Howley actor, Howley. I'm going to have to do that. So going back in my sophomore year, um, I would audition for directing scenes, small theater, children's mm -hmm. theater, studio theater, it was another theater, there was, and main stage uh, theaters at Northwestern. So. To make a long story short, within that three-year period, by the time I graduated, I c was considered a working member actor in that uh, theater department. And during those three years, I wound up doing summer stock in Colorado, Michigan City, Indiana, and Aspen, Colorado. And all the roles that I played in my college career were never any ethnic mm. Asian parts. Correct. It was all okay. character roles. So it was always like, I know, if I'm forced to do an accent that's like selling out and I don't want to perpetuate the stereotype, mm -hmm. you know, oh, rata rock, because everybody was using that rata rock. And so you want to say, oh, you mean lots of luck, you plick, you know, that kind of a thing. For example, like, like on my second episode of Kung Fu, it was my first guest star and we were rehearsing and then just before we we're going to do the scene the director went oh and, and Clyde can you give us a, an accent it, it, you're sounding too American oh now the sensitive part went, what the f <laughs> you mean you know I could go down that road and then I went well, okay um, then I thought you know David Carradine yeah when he talks you know my name is Kwai Chang King uh, so then when my first line was like, say for example, Kwai Chang Kane, we the members of the Tong believe that you're in violation of our rules in this town. And I said, cut. And the director went, yeah, that's it. Oh. Because the lesson was, you don't have to give them what you think that mm. they expect you to give. Oh, I see. You know, are there any changes along the way since you started your career as far as the Asian American actors being represented in this film, television, theater? Oh, you know, I, I, um, I've, I've definitely seen and witnessed and experienced a lot of changes. Um, mm -hmm. It, it, it kind of takes me aback sometimes when I meet some of the younger actors and they, they look and go, wow, you were a pioneer. And mm -hmm. I went, oh, pioneer, that sounds like you're old, you know, sort of like covered <laughs> wagons going across the, the prairie or something like that. But there's always got to be, um, I, I take it with a grain of, of uh, humility and uh, uh, gratitude mm -hmm. because it goes along with what we're talking about uh, I came into this business mm -hmm. at a time when I felt there was a greater responsibility as an artist as an actor to help change present so that people understand that we are people too right 
I still carry that feeling of you have to be responsible. Uh, and a lot of times, I think there's a lot of our, our younger performers are a bit lazy about that. Um, and uh, the younger ones, especially because, you know what, they grew up at a time when there wasn't as much mm. difference. Mm -hmm. I grew up at a time yeah. when, as a kid in Hawaii, I knew, I experienced there's a difference. You know, I grew up watching Star Trek Next Generation, uh -huh. and that's when I first saw you okay. on TV when I was living in Brunei. Well, what was your reaction when you first got the call and, you know, to be uh, casted for that role? Oh, well, you know, <clears throat> I, I, I said to Rick Berman, who was the mm -hmm. exec producer of all the Star Trek uh, show, uh, uh -huh. the, the um, series, <clears throat> that, uh, oh, finally, we got a, you, got a, you could place <laughs> me, because previous to that, uh, I had auditioned for the part of the Ferengi in uh, S Deep Space Nine. Oh. But, and I would go in for other parts, and then finally, he said, well, we finally found a part for you to play, and that was as Vice Admiral Nakamura, who uh, was at the Space Academy with uh, Picard. And uh, I, we, I had to have like about an hour and a half of makeup every day, wow. and Mike Westmore had to make me look a little bit older so that I could mm. be believable to be the same mm. age range as Patrick Stewart. Wow. You know? I don't think a lot of people know about the fact that you were elected for a two-year term as the largest you know, local SAG after a... Oh yeah, I had yeah, uh, in Los Angeles, right? We uh, there were there used to be two unions, SAG, Screen yeah. Actors Guild, and AFRO, the uh, American Federation of Television and Radio Artists, and uh, we were able to merge them together in, in 2012. And in 2013, I uh, was given the opportunity and honor to be elected the first yeah. president of SAG after Los Angeles local. Wow! And it was interesting. It's sort of like kind of, um, how should I put it, kind of exemplifies where Asians are. It oh. was like, oh yeah, Clyde Kusazi got elected <laughs> president, you know. Well, I hope to uh, see you again soon and good luck in all your future endeavors. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good luck to your endeavor too. Thank you so much. This is Kathleen Choi. I'll see you next time on Asian Voices. Mahalo. Mahalo. <laughs>